Greetings. I'm G. Craig Lewis of EX Ministries, and we're here with another episode of The Exposition. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually our eighth episode, and uh, today we're going to be talking about rules of engagement. Now, I first just want to thank those of you that have uh, asked questions. We're going to answer those questions for you, some of them today. Uh, the, I, I thank you for the support. Uh, with EX Ministries, and thank you for supporting the DVDs and the videos that we show. Uh, we show commercials on the video segments uh, during the break, and uh, just to try to show you, you know, most of my videos uh, contain two, three, four hours of information. So what you get in here in the exposition is just a small uh, sample size of what the videos actually have. Uh, so you can get those videos at exministries.com on our website. I don't upload our videos to YouTube because YouTube censors me and gives me problems. And uh, so you can get those videos directly from us at exministries.com. Also, our EX Ministries uh, web uh, channel is not monetized. So we're not making any money off of them. We're just po posting the expositions for your benefit just to try to shed some light on some things uh, concerning the word of God. So today we're going to be talking about the rules of engagement, dealing with uh, dating and getting married and kind of on the same vine of what we were talking about uh, the last two episodes. Right. But uh, we're going to be dealing with it from more, I guess, more so of a single perspective. Yes. Yeah. All right, Carmen, what you got? So let's start here. We always hear people say this. I know I hear it a lot personally. We always hear people say you're single. This is your time to be prepared, prepare for your mate. So how do we effectively do that? How do we prepare for a mate? Um, probably the, you want to deal with your issues first, right? <laughs> so the first step is definitely um, you want to deal with your issues prior to getting married. But but also being a part of a fellowship that deals that helps you deal with the issues is also important as well. But um, so a ministry that can help you identify those problems and, and offer solutions based on sound doctrine is mandatory when pre preparing for marriage. Um, obviously, we live in a world and a society where they want to come up with their own off brands of what marriage is or what it looks like. But we all know that it comes from and it's ordained by God. So why would we get any other process of how to prepare for it and follow through with it outside of the church? It just it just really wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. the definition of marriage, it has to be defined by the church. All right. So you've if, before you can pre prepare for it, you need to have it defined for you what yeah. it should look like. And uh, hopefully the church you're attending has examples of godly marriages, things that you can look up to and understand and see. So you can at least get that definition first so you can know just how unprepared for it you really are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's, it's uh, uh, being young. I'm going on like 12 years. I grew up in a single parent home. I, d I had no clue what that would bring to my marriage. So having a place where you can come, which will be the church, where somebody can help you identify some of those things, get it out your system so that it can be a healthy environment, you know, for the children, assuming that you plan to have children um, that are coming to the world. So it's, it's just best to, to be a part of a fellowship that will help you prepare for that. Yeah, and that's another reason the devil is trying so hard to stop people from the fellowship or say that church is not necessary or the fellowship is not necessary, uh, because that actually hurts uh, your opportunity to get friends and also be in a place where you're with like-minded believers where maybe you can find a not find well if you're a man you can find a prospect if you're a woman you can be prospected <laughs> can i say that <laughs> so. but but you know um a, a church or a ministry that ministers to the total man mm. mind body and spirit is a good place to go that way you're getting healing for your issues and you don't run nobody off. And that's right. the biggest problem. You know, everyone wants to, uh, well, not everyone, but some people want to get married, but they're not ready. Right. And they're not ready because they're not in the right mind frame or whatever. So you need to go somewhere and get cleaned up, yeah. dusted off and, 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 and prepared for it. But you also, like you're saying, have to see it in action to really, to really understand it. And, the, and to me, the most important part of fellowshipping or w with like-minded believers is you get to know them. Right. Mm -hmm. OK, so when you get to know people, you know them better. Mm -hmm. So then you're not at the laundry mat and some dude throwing coins at you and hit on you. You know, you ain't at the convenience store. You know, <laughs> and I, I had a, a, a image of that in my mind, too. Some dude just said, hey, girl, <laughs> throw a coin. 
<laughs> but it's not just you at the laundromat or you just randomly getting gas and some dude, hey, let me hold that pump for you. Yeah. You know, and you don't know. He's just total strangers. Right. But, uh, you know, when you're in a ministry, you know people. Sometimes you've been there for years. You got to know them for years or people. And, and so not only do you know them, but the people know them. Right. So it's just a safer Safer situation, a safer environment. First Thessalonians 5 and 12 says, and we beseech you, brethren, uh, we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and which are over you in the Lord and which, um, which admonish you. That's three different people. So he's saying you need to know those that labor Your with mind. you. Yep. You need to know those that are over you in the Lord. Right. And you need to know those that admonish you. Right. Everybody's trying to live behind social media and live, you know, uh, vicariously through YouTube and just <laughs> Pick a pastor, every you know whoever right. is going to agree with them and those kind of things. But that's not a that's not safe. Uh, you you miss out on a lot of things, especially getting to meet people and and getting to know people and possibly uh, finding uh, the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Right. So I think you're saying I can't go to I need a man dot com and download the checklist <laughs> man and com. just check off. I got to. Wow. I want you to fellowship. delete that bookmark okay. after this show. Wow. Okay. Got just you. Delete. <laughs> okay. Understood. Understood. <laughs> so my next question is, <laughs> let's take a moment and we shouldn't have to do this, but I think we do need to do this. We need to define what Christian dating is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, well, I, I think it's evident biblically and let's just, I guess, reengage and say that you need to date for marriage. Um, that needs to be the sole purpose. And, and, and we're just not generally in today's society or even in my particular demographic. We don't we don't have that understanding that the dating isn't for a fun reason or for another reason other than for marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely Christians should only date for marriage and Christian dating should really be called Christian courtships because falling in love without an end game will always lead to sin. So if we look at first Corinthians seven and two, it says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So that's conclusive. That's not saying that we can just go out there and, OK, I'm going to date you for the first six months. Then I'm going to find out that the way you clean your ears is not the way I would like to see you clean your ears. So I'm going to go ahead and hop to her. It, it just that's that's not that that's a breeding ground for confusion. And then it puts you in a mindset where you're trying to create something that doesn't exist. And if you're constantly going after something that doesn't exist, you'll never, you know, you'll never commit to something that, you know what I mean? Because yeah. the, the idea is to grow together. You know, we see the yings and the yangs, the opposites that, that do attract each other. But at the same time, you want to make sure that that those vows that you gave are actually lived out. So in that moment in time that we're dealing with something that that I don't like in my spouse or vice versa, mm-hmm. then I'm going to be patient, just like God is patient with me. I'm going to work through it. It's mm-hmm. like God provided me the time to work through it. It's the, it's the same concept. So I think that that's very important for people to understand. You men, go and find the one wife and, and young lady. Wait till the one husband come and find you. <laughs> um, and, I, and, I, and I think that's the best way to go about it. So we can just make sure. The future is secure the way God planned for it to be. Did you say yin and yang? Did I? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they gonna eat us up for that, but they, they are. But we already in trouble. I so. mean, they uh, know who PX <laughs> Ministry is. They know that we're not. I just wanted to let you right, know. Right. I got you. I got you. We just added 150 emails to this. <laughs> got you. But um, <laughs> but, <laughs> and marriage. But but the thing about marriage, and I I say this when I do premarital counseling. Uh, you know, praise God, I've been able to do 39 premarital counseling sessions since praise I've been God. pastoring, uh, which is to me, I mean, we've married way more people than we've buried and we've married way, you know, uh, I mean, our numbers are pretty good when it comes to marriage. I Amen. think the church should be married. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, absolutely. but, um, marriage is totally relative. So marriage is not based on physical appearance, attraction or logic. It's nothing you got to sit and ponder and think about over and over and over. Right. Marriage is based on one thing, and that's a decision. Right. So that's the problem. People aren't people aren't in position to make that decision. Mm-hmm. People weren't taught how to make solid decisions that you don't go back on. People aren't given examples of good decision making. Right. And so when it comes to making that decision for marriage, that's where people, you know, are lacking or dropping, you know, dropping the ball. But uh, it's just a decision to be with someone and commit to them. Right. And that's it. Just like with Christ. Christ is a decision. decision. 
We make a decision and we stick to it. Like you said last week, stick to itness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a spirit. Stick to itness. <laughs> That's a word. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you stick to your decision. And that means win, lose, or draw, you're going to stay with your decision and you're going to make sure you work it out. And it's, 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 it's relative 100% based on two people deciding this is what I want to do forever. Mm. And, um, you know, you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have all of that. Mm. But there are no absolutes to this. And a lot of ministries teach that. A lot of people teach that. This is your soul mate. I saw his eyes right. looking through the windows of my Buick when he wasn't even there. And I just knew when I finally <laughs> ran up to him. I don't know why it's a Buick. I don't know why. But yeah, yeah. I, did, I, <laughs> I, I, I knew once I, you know, got to him. Yeah. And people make it spooky mm -hmm. and they don't understand. If you base it on those things, you're basing it on something absolute. So you're thinking it's going to be those things that's going to carry you through the rough times. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah. It's the relativity of it that's going to carry you through the rough times, which is my decision, yeah. my decision that I made. I'm sticking to my decision right. no matter what comes. Right. And so that's, you know, that's another thing uh, that people have to remember when you decide to date. If you're not ready to make that decision, you're not ready to look at it through those lenses that I just described, mm -hmm. then you don't need to be dating. Right. Let me ask you. So w wouldn't that be a continual decision as well? And, and this is how you could de decrease the divorce rate. Right. So if, if something happens within a marriage or within the, the Christian courtship process and that moment, you can make the decision to either say, you know what, I'm willing to ride with that or I'm not willing to ride with that. It, 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 so I, I think the idea of Hey, I can quit you for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. It's misconstrued based on some of the biblical teachings that, or the not so biblical teachings that we get from churches, right? Teachings, yeah. Because it, if, if the ministers or if the pastors are saying, you know what? I'm deciding to no longer commit to this person. Then how do you, how do you expect people to stay committed to Christ? There's, yeah. there's no way that we can preach commitment. There's no way we can decide to continue to serve Christ if we're saying, that we can't even love the person that we stood before Christ and we will love through everything. So I think that 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 continual decision is a, a big part of the conversation. Well, as and, well. and that's what qualifies the pastor to even teach mm. the ability to do that in his home. If right. he can't do that in his home, he can't teach it from the pulpit. and He can't illustrate it from the message. Right. It has to be shown from his home first. And that's what the Bible says. How can he do that? Right. And so, yeah, that that decision is is perpetual. Meaning that it's going to you're going to always be faith, faced with should I leave or should I stay? Right. But you keep making the same decision because, you know, hey, this is based. This is just a circumstance. Right. You know, and the bottom line is, if you leave that situation and go to another one, you still taking you. <laughs> so if you still taking you, <laughs> you're going to be faced with that again. Are yeah. you going? Right. Well, it, it, you're going to be faced with it again. So it's right. best to just stay there, work that situation out, trust God for it. Mm -hmm. Then you got an illustration of how you trust God and your relationship with Christ. Amen. That's good. So I wanted you to define what Christian dating was because of this next question. This is something that I'm seeing so commonly. Mm -hmm. And so I really want you to, to really talk about it and help us understand, is it acceptable? for single Christian women or men for that matter, to date multiple, well, we'll say women in this situation. Is it acceptable for single Christian women to date multiple men in the church, especially? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? You just define what Christian dating is, but right. you know what they call it now, hanging out. So right. is it okay to hang out with a whole bunch of different men? Well, let's clarify that dating multiple men, you know, from a woman's perspective, dating mm -hmm. multiple men or a one man after the other, mm -hmm. that's a sign of desperation, mm. right? There's obviously a bigger issue there, which usually means that a woman has either low self-worth or she needs the attention of a man. Or there's a void or something there where she's trying to pacify it based on that that particular male. Right. So this woman should definitely not marry with that mindset. That's mm -hmm. why we started off by saying that you got to deal with your issues first. So if it is you have a, a, a particular scenario where a young lady grew up without a father, there's going to be some extremities there that she needs to sit up under like good sound doctrine, good sound counsel to help her understand what those things are so that she can properly prepare to be found by wherever her hero or whatever her husband, I'm saying hero because that's what we say at ABC, mm -hmm. um, wherever her husband is or wherever he's searching for it, right? Um, so that's very important. You, you gotta, you have to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and this is male or female, but we're, we're talking about the young lady right now and say, you know what? I do recognize that I have something going on, but be okay with saying, I don't know how to identify that. Mm -hmm. 
So then you go to leadership. You get yourself and you go to leadership and you ask for that counsel. You get that information. But the important thing after that, after the information is you actually have to apply it. You got to <laughs> right. follow through with it so the changes can be made. Mm -hmm. And dating, I'm going I'm to touch on what you said, dating multiple folks in a church. Yes. Um, nah. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, when we first started ABC, when I first started, uh, I guess a few years after we had gotten up to maybe about 150 people or so, you know, we were actively involved in the courtship process. So we wouldn't let right. a guy approach a girl unless he came to the elders or leadership and said, I'm interested in this girl, because we had a lot of young ladies that had moved here uncovered on their own, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't want a guy taking advantage of that situation. And we definitely want to keep the whole spirit out of ABC. Amen. But we just didn't want a whole bunch of sleeping around and all that kind of stuff. You know, Amen. I, I've seen that before. I, you know, a bunch of babies born out of wit. All just all of that stuff. We were right. just trying to get a handle on that when we were a young church. Now that we have, you know, 500 uh, plus uh, here now, it's more difficult to do that. But because it's constantly preached and it's constantly emphasized, guys aren't so. Um, inclined to just holler at chicks in the hallway right. because every, you know, all the guys are kind of watching, everybody's kind of looking mm -hmm. and we just kind of keep that mentality. We don't have single meet and greets and bowling night for the single men and women and everybody right. connecting <laughs> and sharing bowling balls and all that kind of stuff. You know, we're not, <laughs> I don't know how you share a bowling ball. You got your two fingers in, he got his one in and y'all gonna throw it together. I don't know. <laughs> Sharing both and both. But wow. we don't we don't have Uno night and draw two, uh, Willie. <laughs> you know, we're not we're not doing that. Mixing the bringing the guys and girls together. So, you know, we're not doing that. The guys hang out with the guys, the girls hang out with the girls. And that that's kind of how we keep it. And, you know, that that kind of cuts down. You're not going to ever stop the devil. You ain't going to ever stop the horny toad. And you ain't going right. to stop, you know, right. the, the whackness of some guys. But you can kind of temper it yeah. to a certain degree when you are teaching these things actively from the microphone mm -hmm. in and as well as the uh, the other guys just kind of uh, watching and paying attention because we want the women to be able to walk freely here. We actually have more men than women at this church. So, mm -hmm. you know, guys crowd up and stuff. We, we we don't want guys wandering eyes and looking at women when they walk by and all that kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. we want to make sure this is a safe environment for the women, that they're comfortable here and that when it's time, when that time comes, you know, the guy will approach her or whatever. But we like to be involved in that process so that we can make sure, you know, you're not being approached in the wrong way for the right. wrong, you know, for the wrong reason. Right. right. And I think it's like you said before, we got to be smart with our decisions. You make a decision, you get one coffee mate. Just one. <laughs> Just one. So the next question, this is another one that I'm seeing a lot of happen here in churches and just in our community as a whole. What is the line in Christian dating? What's too much? Are we sensitive to what maybe the gentleman can handle as opposed to what we can handle? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. What's too much? Well, you definitely, we, we, we definitely, or you need to, to know yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you need to know what you can handle and what you can't handle. You know, um, oftentimes we will have church fellowships. Um, something that we do is we meet at the church and we watch a football game, yeah. right? Particularly the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And there's men and women in there. Some of them are married, some of them are not married. Um, but if you know you're dealing with a wandering eye, all the men are looking at the game and you're in the back of the, the room, you know, just <laughs> scanning the room. Right, right. <laughs> you know, if, like if, predator. Right, right. If, you, if that's a problem for you, I mean, it wouldn't fly here, but I'm saying if that's a problem for you, then that's probably something that you probably just hey, just watch the game at the, you know at the home. You can pull up on your phone in the car if you just want to feel connected. <laughs> go ahead and just chill in the parking lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> but no, but you you need to you need to know what what, what you can handle, right? Yeah. Um, the Bible draws a line for us. It says it's good not to touch, but because we live in a world in a society where music, entertainment, um, all of the all of these things they convince us to cross lines. Mm -hmm. um, we just need to make sure we go right back to First Corinthians seven one, which states now concerning these things. Whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, meaning not to have sexual relations if you're not married. And it goes on to say that if, if there's an issue there where you, you know, you feel in that strong desire, then that probably needs to go ahead and be your wife. If you if you decided in your, you know, where sin is conceived there. Right. Hmm. Right. So we need to go ahead and just start changing that that mindset of just wanting her for her, her physicality and just put a ring on it. Not Beyonce. 
right? <laughs> Literally <laughs> consider the commitment, mm -hmm. get counsel, and marry that young lady. I mean, that's that's really what we would like to continue to promote. Yeah, and um, you know that 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 First uh, Corinthians seven and one uh, scripture. It's not just talking about uh, sexual intercourse. I mean, you're not supposed to kiss. Right. You know, people don't know, but you know, when I do weddings, uh, well, when I do premarital counseling, I tell them, I said, you know, you, you know, you can't kiss her, right? You shouldn't kiss her. And some of them are like, yeah, I know. Well, the people that are from around here, but yeah. people from outside, are like, uh, what? What? <laughs> it's right. like, yeah. I mean, why does the preacher say you may now kiss, kiss the, bride? the bride? Right. I mean, that's when you're supposed to do it. Right. And like, oh, I know that. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you need to know that, you know, because that's that's beyond touching. Mm -hmm. You know, and those are things that the Bible is telling us or Paul is saying it is good for you not to do mm -hmm. for your own benefit. Right. Right. You ain't going to help the Bible because you're not doing it. Right. This is for <laughs> your own benefit yeah. so that you can keep your flesh under control. Right. And um, becoming one flesh while courting creates soul ties. Right. And that's the dangerous part. It creates soul ties. Some of these don't go away easily. Right. Like I've dealt with people. These don't go away easily, it's depending on the deficit that you had before you got involved. Right. These could be some severe issues you're dealing with mm -hmm. and they might not go away. And I know a lot of people that aren't married to this day because they are they have soul ties to people that they should have never been involved with. Right. You know, we're not just dealing with people now. We're dealing with demons, demons now. Like some. Yeah. This is this is it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. Ephesians six and twelve says, "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places." That's your fight. Right. So you 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 don't want to get with someone or get involved with someone that has these spiritual issues. Right. Then you yoke up with them, become one with them, and that spirit pass. I remember we were casting. Uh, I was casting demons out of this one this one lady and. The guy that she had been sexually involved with, the demon went right out of her and passed into the guy. And wow. it passed through a bond that they had made. Wow. And so it's just that easy. Yeah. So you want to make sure when you're considering these things, when you are deciding to court and, you know, the courtship may not work out. So you done invested, you sexually invested yourself. You've right. become one with this person. Then you break up. Then he marries a shyman from Haiti. Right. And then you wake up one morning and you you in the air, just floating over the bed. Right. You don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's the dude you was with. <laughs> Y'all, <laughs> this sounds funny, but these are real life really? stories. Yeah. This stuff has really happened. Yeah. It's really happened. So you got to be very, very careful. I mean, I, I talk to uh, young ladies sometimes through email and different things, and they tell me, hey, I have... Uh, Night husbands, which is a uh, incubus visiting right. me and holding me down, pinning me down, taking my breath away, all these kind of things. And 99 percent of those are from a sexual relationship that they had with someone prior. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to be careful. So, yeah, we uh, uh, there is a line in Christian courtships and that line is no touch, no touch. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. like, and you're right. We do have to be careful, especially in a time like now. So with that being said, my next question is, should singles investigate a person that they're interested in? Should they know their background? Should they pay that $39.95 online and find <laughs> out? How come you know how much it costs? <laughs> what is going <laughs> on? So let's answer that question. <laughs> She is giving us facts today. Yeah. So, uh, like we were saying, this is why it's important. <laughs> this is why it's important to be um, in a fellowship that teaches sound doctrine. Right. And the reason is, is so that you can have a system of checks and balances that actively assist uh, with prayer and watching. Right. We were just stating that that's how we monitor here. At one point, leadership had it in place where it would go directly through leadership as we have grown. Now it's kind of just adjusted to we know the standard of our reputation as men here at, 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 at abc so we keep our eyes actively open so you know we we don't approach women just haphazardly hey we seen you talking to that guy no these are adults that we're dealing with right um we have you know checks and balances in that but that's the reason why you would want to be a part of a fellowship um so that you would have those checks and balances right um and this is pretty much god's background check process so us knowing who we labor among, 
we can vouch for something or somebody. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what, Brother J or, or Pastor G, um, you know, I was thinking about such and such. Pastor, you know what? I've seen him at every hero meeting. Mm -hmm. Every every outing we've gone to, he's just about there. I've I've heard that he's a pretty good worker. You know what? That doesn't sound like a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. Versus, I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but he said he's been gone for four years. I'm telling you that I have no idea who you're talking about. Yeah. So that would be a check and balance for that young lady. Um, and unfortunately, w w the proper way would be through the father. But unfortunately, we do have, a, you know, a high amount of cases where young ladies don't have a father to, to look through. So just being in a good sound fellowship where, you know, those security uh, measures are in place just out of love, not because we're assigned to it, but because we love our sisters in Christ. So we want to make sure they're protected. And the fathers are supposed to be that authority. Right. You know, uh, back in the day, especially in the Bible days, the father would actually go out and get the wife for the son. Right. Uh, and then the son would actually deal with the in-law and actually live with the father-in-law. Um, it was just that, you know, strict because they wanted to make sure you were ready. Uh, and so the father was always a looming authority. So wasn't nobody going to just come holler at the daughter. Right. Daughter never left the home until a man came to get her and take her from the home. Mm -hmm. So she never left her father's covering back right. in the day because the Bible says a woman should not have, you know, should not function without her head covered or being covered. Right. So that decision, a woman shouldn't have to make by herself ever anyway. There was always an authority that helped her make that decision because a woman is a weaker vessel because of her emotional right. disposition. Mm -hmm. And a man can logically and soundly help assist her in making, you know, that decision by looking at the pros and cons and not just how you feel. Right. And so this is why the father was the, you know, looming authority. And this is why nowadays, you know, it's, 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 it's a little different um, because a lot of girls leave the home. Or they're not under their father. And right. so guys just hit on them. And many guys target women like that. They've told me that. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a woman who's away from her father. Yeah. I'm looking for a woman that don't know her father. I'm looking for that because that's going to be the easy pass. I don't have to ever deal with a looming authority. Right. And so I can pretty much treat her like I need to treat her. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's totally different when there is a man there to do that. And that's why we teach what we teach here at ABC to try right. to get that man in his place mm -hmm. so that the next generation can benefit from it. That's right. You know, I was that looming authority even for my daughter. I scared Cameron half to death you mm -hmm. know, from showing my gun collection. And <laughs> but he still talk about how I turned around in my chair and looked at him. He, he, he still remembers <laughs> that. But I wanted the brother to know this is my daughter. I'm the authority. I'm the looming authority. I'm always watching this. So yeah. you're going to treat my daughter a certain way. And that put pressure on him to treat her better, to do better. And that that's what that Lumen Authority does. And this, you know, this makes because of the lack of that, it makes a lot of women vulnerable to whack dudes and even demons. When you when you know, when you uncover first Corinthians uh, 11 and 10 says for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. This is meaning she should have an authority. She should have a head or headship over her mm -hmm. so that um you know she her emotions or different things on attack spiritually by you know spirits and then also wrong men uh breaking into her emotions and misusing her there needs to be a looming authority all right well we got to take a real quick break and hopefully we've saved somebody 39.95 we're going to be back with more <laughs> visit us online at exministries.com <laughs> <laughs> One, premarital sex is a marriage inhibitor. It will stop you from marriage. Yes, it will. Men should never enter into relationships with women without planning to marry. I'm like Paul, I just believe God won't be single. Wait, but you watching porn. Going to work every day, bringing the check home, paying your woman's bills. That gives you value. He didn't tell Eve by the sweat of your brow, you gonna be out there working too. Society seeks to empower the woman because this is what happened in the Garden of Eden. The devil tried to empower the woman to lead the man. He knew once the woman had power over the man, the home would be what? Destroyed. You got the desire to lead men and be in control and strive to equate yourself with men, level the playing field. When you're single, then you're gonna have to marry a jive turkey that's gonna go for that. 
or never marry at all and just have a whole bunch of boyfriends. They done come up with all kind of women ministries too. And all it's doing is inhibiting women from getting married. It's making women less and less attractive to me. You have to attend upon the Lord without distraction, meaning wait on God. So we're back with more. We're talking about rules of engagement and we have another question and this one relates to our single parents. We're in a society now where, of course, unfortunately, so many families have split and broken up for different reasons. So what are the rules when it comes to single parents and dating? Um, just depending on the circumstance, okay. uh, single men and women should proceed with caution um, when you're dating with children. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a couple of reasons why. But. The main thing is making sure that your issues with your children's biological parents have been resolved prior to remarriage or marrying while parenting. So we just want to be careful with having children that you just don't decide to just make this, you know, indefinite decision here, um, not knowing that it's not only affecting you, but it's also affecting the children. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when it comes to uh, just <clears throat> singles that may not be in that situation, mm -hmm. they just a single mother or someone, a single dad or whatever that just has kids, even when you're dating in those situations, you still need to be careful to make sure that you don't have issues with the biological. Right. That's, that's the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. People marry and date while they have issues with the biological parent. Right. Right. And that causes issues, whether you're not going to marry them or whatever the situation if you have those issues and then you marry someone with those same issues, those issues might break you apart from right. who you marry. Yeah. I mean, so you need to make sure things you find out why I hate my uh, baby daddy so much, why I hate right. my baby mama so much. You need to get that resolved before you even think about dating. Uh, uh, get that resolved. And a lot of times when you get it resolved, you may have found a mate. You don't have to date. That, <laughs> right? That's a good point. And so why not get that resolved first? When I do premarital counseling here, that's the first thing I tell them. It's like, look, before we even start this process, you, 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 you have an issue with the baby mama. You need to go straighten that out. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there's nothing I can do. Well, you need to fast and pray because I don't want you coming back to me when your new wife is mad at you saying right. there's nothing I can do. Right. So you need to learn the fasting and praying and uh, you need to learn that process anyway. Right. Uh, because that's going to affect you even in your marriage, you know, your marriage to come. Right. So um, and then trusting children uh, or thrusting children in a certain uh, situations and circumstances can be dangerous when you're single. So you got to make sure, you know, uh, that you are sure that this is a person that you plan to marry and you're right. just not haphazardly dating in front of your children. Right. right? Cause then that's when that spirit gets on them. They don't understand, you mm -hmm. know, you, so you need to make sure uh, of that because if the courtship fails and you're by yourself, then you're hurt. Right. But if you have children in the courtship and the courtship fails, not only are they hurt, mm -hmm. but they're actually unapproved of again. Right. They're already right. unapproved of now because you're a single parent. Mm -hmm. So somebody let them down in some kind of way because y'all aren't together. Then they get unapproved of another time mm -hmm. after this relationship fails. Right. So you really have to consider that and make sure you do your homework uh, before you decide to do that. So I can't meet Johnny Sunday and then we go on the family date Wednesday. <laughs> family? Mm, What's a family nah. date? I've nah. never heard of that. I'm sorry, that's not on the list. Nah, okay, back to our next question <laughs> that I've seen a lot of is, should Christians date outside of their beliefs? When we were growing up, you know, if they weren't the same. It was like, no, 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 no. But I think people kind of see things differently now. Do they have to have the same faith? Well, the popular response should be, why would you want to? Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. it, it, that just doesn't make common sense. So so if you love the Lord, mm -hmm. then you should require the same from the person that you're becoming one with. That doesn't that is that doesn't make sense. Second Corinthians six and 14 says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion have light with darkness. Now, the thing is, I've seen this and I've actually attended a wedding that was officiated. <laughs> where the male was uh, Muslim in faith and the young lady was raised Christian. So there were two people presiding over the ceremony. And now what's funny is the dominating faith in that particular ceremony was the Muslim. So they let the preacher go first. Then 
they completely just move him out the way and they, <laughs> they did this elaborate thing for um and I don't know what the what what Muslims call their their preachers or whatever mm -hmm. and he just had this you know he had a different microphone the whole nine but the, the, it was just a the whole thing became <laughs> oh, my family though anyway it was hilarious <laughs> it was hilarious so how do you do that how, how do we marry if I believe in Jesus you believe in Buddha when we die how, you know what I mean? You can't. Like, there's no, there's no way for that to be. It's just you can't do that, you know. And a, and a person that is truly a child of God, truly a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, would not marry or put themselves in a position to be um, in a situation like that. It's just, it's impossible for. But that let to me work. jump in though, and Pastor, I want you to speak on this. But what about those that say, you know, he's really a good man? We don't believe the same thing, but he's really nice. He works hard. He has a great job. Great, great family man. No one is good but the Father. Okay. No. <laughs> I mean, being good, I mean, it's not good enough. Our good is not good enough anyway. Right. But it's not even about that. It's, it's supposed to be about your commitment to the Lord. Yeah. Like if your relationship with the Lord is for real, then you're not going to go against his word, which says don't do that. Right. So now we're talking about someone that may not be strong in their own faith or strong mm -hmm. enough in their own faith to to make this decision. You're actually dating someone outside of your faith because you're attracted to them or whatever the word is that they're using now. Right. But they don't believe what you believe, then you're disobeying your faith for them, then do you really have faith? Right. And, and then, that's I, I think that's the biggest Where does the order come from though? Mm -hmm. Right? Because everybody has, as far as the faith is concerned, everyone teaches a different form of marriage. So where I don't understand like Jehovah's Witness, don't aren't they promised or Muslims, aren't they promised certain wives after they die or a certain amount of wives or something like that? Like, I just don't understand how that how do you agree on something that, that doesn't agree? Right. That's the main thing. It just we already we automatically don't agree. So how do we agree? And if we don't agree, then how are we agreeing to get married? Hmm. So then is it a real marriage? It's just so many different yeah. avenues the Bible says to two, go down. How can two walk together? And Amos, how can two walk together right. uh, except they be in agreement? And how can a home be divided? Right. Right. So and, and, and I want to read this to this is important. You became mm -hmm. uh, you can't lead a man to Christ. This is for the women that think they can lead him to Christ and then marry. Because ah. I know women that do that. I'm, mm -hmm. You know, they they're on a mission to get him saved and then going to marry him. But you can't do that because then you become his spiritual authority. And this is going to affect the way the home yeah. functions. Yeah, if you're the spiritual authority, you're going to always have to keep him saved or you gonna always keep him in check or always make him feel what you did or the weight of what you did for him spiritually. Yeah. And so now you have a man who is submitting to you spiritually, right. you know, uh, and the flip side of that is a man can go and find some old gal and get her saved. Right. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. He can, <laughs> he can go get her and get her saved, you know, because he's the head or whatever. And because he's a spiritual authority, you know, he can go get her saved, clean her up, dust her off and bring her into the faith. Mm -hmm. You know, but <laughs> but the issue is mm -hmm. with that situation is, you know, is she going to be the same person? Because when you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things come new. Mm -hmm. So is she going to be the person that you wanted in the beginning? Right. And that's what I'm saying. Who do you want? I mean, <laughs> what did you want before the Christ? Right. You know, before the Christ was in her, what, what, what about her did you want? That's just, <laughs> you know, crazy, so yeah. that's the big question. So people that do this, they're running an experiment. They might as well be guinea yeah. pigs running in a wheel. <laughs> right. Because dude, you ain't no telling how this is going to end up mm -hmm. because you have no absolutes because you're disobeying scripture mm -hmm. to get what you want. And that never has a good ending. Wow. Yeah. Now, this one is a big one, and I've, I've heard this question many times before. So I, I, I wanted the opportunity for you both to speak about it. Is there really someone for everyone? You know, why are there so many single women and so few single men? Why is there such an imbalance? Well, according to the word perilous times. Um, so this is a, a heightened society that's really about self, self-pleasing, um, flesh-pleasing, things of that nature. So you have, we have homosexuality. We talked about it in um, the, the previous episode, um, gamophobia, fear of marriage, we have prison, death rate. I mean, weight loss. I mean, it goes on and on. I've, I've had conversations where uh, a marriage was dissolved because it was a contingency in place. 
So I'll marry you at 500 pounds, but you, I give you five years to drop down to 200. I, I promise you. Just made wow. I, I, I promise wow. you. We need to keep rolling. <laughs> wow. I promise you. And and the husband didn't lose the weight, and so they divorced. I promise you. This is what was given to me. So um, our men are MIA. You know, they're being dishonorably discharged uh, because of you know selfishness and sexual sin. They're they're missing in action. <laughs> Because they're looking to please themselves, as Second Timothy three and two says, "For men shall be lovers of the of their own selves." You know, it's 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 twofold. If what I, what I've learned and what I'm trying to practice on a daily basis is, if I if I'm consistent in my role, my wife will automatically adjust to me. So if we have men missing. You're gonna the godly man missing. You're gonna have godly women missing. So we don't have those examples persistent. And we're looking at the, the bigger picture of it, right? If we don't have those two examples uh, consistent enough, it's because the man is out of his place. Something that I've had to I've had to learn. So, if 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 you don't have the proper things, like we've talked about from the beginning of this episode, you, dealing with yourself, it's best to just make sure that you get grounded in those proper things so that the home can be set up the right way. But again, that's why we have that issue because there's so many different avenues that people are choosing which means they're walking away from the Lord because we're still talking about from the springboard of the church, right? We know the world is the world. The world is upset. That's what we're here for to win them. So they let's, let's, let's just give them that grace. They don't know yet. So we're here to teach them. We're here to, to be examples and lead them. But as far as the church, unfortunately, we have the, those issues in the church mm-hmm. where men are dealing with homosexuality in a way where they're not really properly seeking the, the right counsel so they can come out of that lifestyle. They're, they are very selfish because they lack the fortitude to properly lead a home. So it's so many things to to um to to tackle there, but it's because they're becoming lovers of themselves. Yeah. And uh it's that's not the end of it though. I mean there are good men. Right. Um like I said, you know, uh, we have a lot of good men here and there's good men that I know uh, other places and uh the the thing people need to remember and the thing I'd like to say to answer your question as far as women seeing more, you know, there are more women than men. Well, a lot of times you you see from thirsty lenses, you thirsty. So you're in competition with other women. So you yeah. see more women. But there are men that God just won't let you see them. And he won't let you see them because you ain't ready to see them. Right. And you're not in the position to see them. You, you're going to tell me that God doesn't have men that haven't bowed down the bell. No, that don't take that Elijah complex. You you can if you do what you need to do for you. And trust the Lord. Mm-hmm. He says, if you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll give you your heart's desire in that instance. So uh, there there are men that you can't see. You just have to be in position to see them. Right. And a lot of times we, we, we've had that happen even here. You know, women came with the wrong intention and where the men at it? Where the men? Well, you won't see any of them. Right. <laughs> you know, but the ones that come to work on themselves, to better themselves, to to really Put them in a put themselves in a position uh, that God wants them in. Guys see them. You know, we had one girl here that got a great testimony. One girl here, for, she was here for two years and nobody knew she was here. Right. And this one dude, he, you know, he was crazy and mm-hmm. you know, in his mind or whatever. And we had, to, we had yeah. the, the church. We had to discipline him and all of this kind of stuff. Dealt mm-hmm. with this brother. Work on him. Open his head up. Take his brain out. Wash it and get it back <laughs> in. I mean, we had to work on him. <laughs> And um, that whole time he was just, you know, but then when God uh, spoke to him, got him straight, got him right. He became one of the best brothers we had here. Yeah. About a month later, he spotted a girl here. He was like, man, uh, do, do you know her? And I was like, well, yeah, I've seen her, but nobody else had like seen her. It's like she had fallen out the sky. Come to find out she's been going in two years, mm-hmm. but it wasn't time for him to see her. He right. wasn't ready. And then when he finally saw her, now they have a, a beautiful family, a beautiful uh, baby and everything, and they're doing great. Well, that's just a testimony of how when you get yourself together, your eyes are different. Right. Maybe what you see in isn't what you're going to see once God does what he needs to do. Right. Yeah. Well, I have one final question. and These have all been amazing, amazing answers. But this one I have to ask, can a person have the gift of singleness <laughs> like Paul? Yeah. The, no. <laughs> the gift of singleness. The gift of singleness. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to take us on out with this question. Uh, I'll end it with this, but I mean, there is no gift of singleness. Like when God made male and female, he made them to come together, marry, 
be fruitful and multiply. That was his intention. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people like to cite Paul in their singleness because they feel like Paul suggested that people stay single. All right. Uh, but that would be going against God's creation plan. So we know that can't be it if that's God's creation plan for Paul to say it's better to be single. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's, let, let's just go to the word. Uh, well, let me, let me read this first and then we're going to close out with this question because this is the big one I get. I mean, this is the big one. You know, Paul is always so misunderstood by the church when they want to do something. Right. When folks want to do something <laughs> yeah, else, yeah. they always start questioning Paul. Right? Right. When women want to pass, though, oh, you know, that was his opinion. Paul, all of a sudden, Paul's words in the Bible become opinion and optional right. when folks want to do stuff. So when they want to be single, they want to misread what Paul actually says. Or when they're s stuck with singleness, they feel they can't get out of. Mm -hmm. Then they want to cite Paul. But let's let's go to this. Paul was a eunuch. And many church fathers believe he was born this way. Um, but whether he was born with a birth defect or he had his genitals removed, which is what eunuchs did, uh, we know he was free from sexual desires. Right. So however it happened uh, from birth or happened after birth, whatever, we know this is what Paul was and this is why he was free from sexual desires. Paul did not teach for us to suppress these desires, but rather to act on them by marriage. Mm -hmm. right. This is what he taught. Right. The desire to be with someone for companionship, intimacy, and support is normal and should not be demonized or suppressed. However, all of these natural desires can be curbed by going after God and seeking his will for your life. Usually when we go after him and delight ourselves after him, our heart's desires will be given to us. The scriptures that people like to use is 1 Corinthians 7 and 7. So let me go through this before I close. Paul is talking and he said, for I would that all men were even as I myself. And what he means by that is chase mm -hmm. without sexual desires or sexually pure, mm -hmm. without the desire of a woman. Right. Okay. Not homosexual, without sexual desires, period. Mm -hmm. right. right. Okay. Right. You got to break that down in 2018. You do. Mm -hmm. But every man hath his proper gift of God. One manner. Uh, 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 one after this manner and another after that. Here he's talking about being a eunuch because he considers sacrificing his genitalia or however he was born, he considered it a gift uh, to keep his sexual desires away. Right. And so he's saying every man has his gift. One like this, one like that. This just happens to be my gift. You know, these dudes that saying, man, I'm like Paul. That's why I'm single in 40. Cause I, you know, I'm like Paul. Brother, you ain't writing the Bible mm -hmm. and you got a whole bunch of scoochies phone numbers in your phone. That's right. Okay. So you have sexual desires and you're not writing the Bible. Brother, you not Paul. Not Paul. Okay. <laughs> now go make yourself a eunuch. If you're going to do it. Right. If you're going to do Paul, then go on and do it all. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> do it all. First Corinthians 7 and 8 says, I say, therefore, to the unmarried and the widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. And he's saying again, being chaste. It's good for you to be chaste, be pure like I am. He's saying, but if you can't do that, meaning if you still have sexual desires, then let them marry for it's better to marry and to than burn. to burn, which is to burn with lust for sexual gratification. 